Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's very 90s. Yeah, it was, it's fine. Yeah. It's another group effort. I was still it. listening to Biggie, you know, when I didn't exactly. really need to listen need, to We don't need yeah, more. Don't. Exactly. Yeah. Um, like, Get Money is the big song. and there, There's a... Whatever. But... Um, Important, of course. <laughs> after yeah. Junior Mafia... After... Sorry. After Lil' Kim became a breakout star, Junior Mafia just kind of disintegrated and drifted away. But uh, at least one, if not two, of the guys from Junior Mafia just ended up being her bodyguards. I get you, sorry, so that is yeah. an absolute... It's weird. Yeah, yeah it's like, if fucking you, weird. Like, you know what? If you are touring with them and you go, I still love going on tour, and uh, I'll, I'll just do whatever. Yeah, just, I'll just be there. Yeah. Just, just, is there a seat on the plane for me? Yeah. yeah. Can I still be part of I'll go. all the coke? I'm not joking in front of any sort of fucking bullet, like, but I'll go. Um... She sold a shit ton of music. Yeah. Am I wrong in saying that she was the originator of the whole boss woman? Yeah, she would have been one of them. Like yeah. when you t- when you turn from talking about, let's say just MC Light being an incredible rapper yeah. just on her own right. M- MC Light would have been one of the kind of Missy Elliott style Five XL denim jacket type of MCs. That's yeah. what I'm saying. But is she is, is Little Kim always struck me as the one that became this. Talking about Mafia getting, bad getting your money yeah. and being the yeah. boss of your own yep. empire, one hundred percent, yeah, w- yeah. W- definitely one of the originals, originators of that. That comes from the Junior Mafia style yeah. of a way of doing things, the New York way of doing things. And it, no, I'm not going to. So she it. sold 15 million albums and 30 million singles in her career so far. That's an Jesus awful Christ. lot. Yeah, an awful lot. Now, Horn and Foxy Brown, Foxy Brown came out a tiny little bit later than Lil Kim, but the two of them have always been compared together. Yeah. Yeah. So much to the point where they were, they were, they had had collaboration albums yeah. planned. They were like friends. Like I said, they went to school together. Yeah, and something happened along the way where they fucking hated each other. Like Tupac and Biggie. Yeah, fucking hated each other. And this is where it gets real fucked up. It gets to a negativity head. sells far more than positivity. Yeah, really absolutely. Too. But it, by the looks of it, both of them kind of thought they were aping each other. You know what I mean? Stealing, like, stealing the bit of yeah. or, or style. But like the style. So, like, uh, now Lil Kim went on to have mad beef with fucking, uh, with Nicki Minaj. Because yeah, Nicki's right. style is very Lil Kim. Yeah. Um, to the point where uh, Lil Kim's style of music um, start being referred to in the media as gangster porno rap. Actually, that beef came up with Missy Elliott as well. There was oh, a time, she did have There was beef, a time... Yeah. Well, Missy Elliott backed completely away from that, but just it's funny that you mentioned that when Nicki Minaj came out, um, she she said, she made a comment like I'm bringing female rap back to the forefront. Yeah, and all Missy Elliott did was post a picture of Little Kim. Yeah, in uh, the Louis Vuitton yeah. full cover, like the mesh, uh, the, yeah. mesh cover, yeah. like, and said, "Listen." Uh, I just want to shout out to Little Kim, the originator of all yeah. this, and that was taken by the media as a dig yeah. at Nicki Minaj, and it was more Little Kim. Or Missy Elliott, I'm like, nah, I'm just yeah, uh, just letting was, you know. Just little reminder, little letting reminder. You know. Yeah, that letting you know. It didn't always go away for us. It exactly. went away for the media. Don't fucking play on the media for that shit. Yeah. Um, so the, the, so I'm so rap right now. I'm so <laughs> rap right now. I'm so into this right now. So uh, what happened was. Um, the, it kind of came to a head one night, and one of her bodyguards. The, 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 basically, there was a shooting. Right between Foxy Brown's fucking crew and uh, Lil Kim's crew, and one of her guys let rip fucking twenty shots. Can you into imagine the amount of people in, in both of those girls' ears? Oh, okay. of course, yeah. You don't let that motherfucker tell you what to and do. He's sitting oh, over yeah. She's looking at you. Yeah. She's like your ma. Egging the She's like your ma. Of course. Well, she said your dad's in yeah. the doll. Exactly. Your ma sells Avon. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Your ma's your dad. <laughs> your ma's your dad. Yeah. yeah. So it turned out the fucking uh, one of Lil Kim's fucking entourage fucking let rip a lot of rounds into Foxy Brown's crowd. Now nobody is fucking seriously um, injured or d- died or anything like that. But uh, when it goes to court, Lil Kim kind of commits perjury and lies in front of the jury and the judge, and she found out and she has to go to jail. So she goes to jail for a year. Um, it's a fucking long time. It is just for lying. That's why I'd be lying. If I got the court tomorrow, I'm fucking lying. If I believe it. Like crazy, a, unless I didn't it? do anything like. like it can even come up to the fact that if she had told the truth about that she would have not gone to jail for a year well it, just, who, who knows which way she was obviously trying to protect her fucking power um, now what they did do they, they were smart about it they set up a reality TV show with BET and they followed her around for a year during the trial so she made a fucking fuck good, ton good, do it. off her going to court and seeing her She's lawyers boss, and all that. exactly I'm make a boss money. bitch make that money fucking absolutely um, we're so white. It's a cool little. We're oh, so yeah. white. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, I was going to say the thing I always say. I'm not going to do it. Um, 
I'm not William Irish. Yeah, I'm not William Irish. I looked into that during the week. A lot of people agree with you. Yeah. Oil and Nation. Um, no, I'm definitely white. Uh, I always have this dream that I go over to America and I'm just taken in by the rough community for being Irish. Oh, it's, such you, oh, had, it's such a stupid little it's not far dream, off that. though. I, it? Oh no, he's our, he's I Irish. Went, every Irish person thinks, oh, hopes, and dreams that they are not viewed in the form of a conflict of white people. No, but here's, Do you know what I mean, though. I, uh, listen, I'm me, your brother. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you, as a person who's been to America a fucking thousand times, being Irish is like having a bulletproof vest, right? Is it as what I want it to be? One hundred percent. 100% I years ago when fucking that stupid Eminem movie came out 8 Mile I was in Detroit and I said drop me off an 8 Mile I want to see what it's like <laughs> and the people were like no yeah yeah, that in America as well yeah they're like no and I'm like no for real though Just drop, I want to see what it's like and they're like no you can't go there and I'm like listen I'm from Cabra like have you ever been to Ballymoon it can't be as bad yeah. do you know what I mean yeah. It'd be, I'll be fine yeah. just drop me off and collect me in an hour's time I, I'm going to go into a shop I'm going to buy a bottle of coke I'm going to buy a box of fags I'm going to sit in a corner and I'm just going to smoke cigarettes that's what I'm going to do I yeah. just want to see what it's like yeah. and they done it they did done left me there right left me there I was there for 45 minutes I got approached of course I did yeah. I got approached no by way. a lot of lads and they're like what the fuck are you doing here I'm like listen I'm not from here like, what do you mean? This is this is fa- hand on heart. This happened. Where are you from? I'm from Ireland. I'm like, what's that? It's like it's a little island in Europe. And they're like, okay, so Leprechaun. Not even they didn't know because that's a huge. No, but that's a huge. That Leprechaun movie is huge. Yeah, they, I'm not going to lie to you. They didn't know. Right, right. They hadn't a clue. They didn't know what Ireland was. Didn't really understand what Europe was. And the Leprechaun. Yeah. Just, I, I, I met fucking the, 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 the very impoverished people while I was there. I don't. They weren't. There's not, they weren't gangbangers, they were just locals, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I sat there for 40 minutes talking shy, and uh, they, coined it, they coined it knew what Ireland was, but they didn't understand it. They didn't understand it. Now, I didn't give them the whole fucking 800 years of bleeding oppression speech. Yeah, because I think, like, trying to explain to them that um, the Wolf Tones are, are gangster rap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's just it's, it's, there's too many YouTube videos to be shown about all, yeah exactly but um, no problem I had grey crack I had the fucking crack with the boys because um, I started talking started talking about uh, Esham who we, we covered in a, in a podcast yeah. a while ago yeah. um, actually it's on the Patreon it's the regular people want to hear it um, he was a very famous rapper from the tree he was kind of an underground rapper from the tree and um I'd been talking to them, I just picked up the last, I think, Repentance I'd bought, was the last Esham album, I was talking to them about that. And they were very interested in the idea that this fella, from a place they'd never heard of, with the maddest accent ever, knew who Esham was. Yeah. So I, just, I literally just sat there, dulled, I had a box of cigarettes, everybody got smoked, so everyone wanted smoke. Yeah. It was like prison, just here's a smoke, don't stab me. And it was grand, I sat there for like 45 minutes, and a great crack. That's and the white boy dream. For real, but I lived it. And nothing happened. It was great. And well, I ha- like a, sim- a slightly similar story. We were coming back from in LA. We we're driving back from the Hollywood Hills, where the whole observatory thing is. Yeah. Um, seeing the James Dean statue and all that, like that, and going back to Torrance. Actually, incidentally, where uh, NWA's first album was recorded. Yeah. And I saw the ex- Torrance is supposed to be a fucking horrific place. No, Torrance is fine. No, Torrance is no, it's fine. No, absolutely not. Really? We were driving back. And I saw the ex of her Compton and went, Can we go through Compton mm. And they went, <laughs> So why can't we? And I was like, What are you talking about? They're like, I was like, You being serious? Like, absolutely not going to Compton right now. But please. And I was like, Come on, because I can like, oh, oh, yeah, drive. I said, I've always wanted to go to Compton. They're like, yeah. No, seriously, you, you've got this romantic idea right now. Mm. It's a stupid idea for you to go in there right now. And I went, Okay. I no, never I'd, did. I do it in a happy. But, but I also rented a car and went looking for Bigfoot in America as well. So let's be honest. Like, it was a case of there was there were there was talk of maybe driving straight directly through and not mm. stopping, and then I was like, no, no, I want to like to get out. I want to see what they were like. Like it was such. I a, need the boy of forty in was, Compton. It was such a naive fucking thing for yeah. me to do because I have to find no way I would be able to talk myself out of no. any situation. Really, well, in my head, I, I was thinking won't. of me, you me, won't. maybe. Yeah. Well, you will, absolutely. So listen, all I'm, I could think about was where's Doughboy's house. <laughs> All I can think of it was that that, that that fucking bit in Die Hard 3 where he has the sign on them. Mm, mm. Like, oh man. That, was, that would have been there's, me. There's loads of white people in Compton, you'd be grand. Loads. Always well, has been. It, it was advised to not. To, to learn, remember my, what I look like and, and not be a sap. No, you're so grand. I, if anybody, the minute somebody comes up to you, you just go, I'm not from here, lads. Ah, oh, the boys. Yeah. Ah, yeah. be Jesus. 
once you're, once you're different and you're not I never had any issues zero but I do find this and I have to say this actually I've been waiting to say this on this podcast there is a certain oh this is going to do, it's a terrible time to bring this up do it there's a terrible there's a there's an incredible suck it to me uh, uh, suck it uh, to uh. me like you want to do now fucking Missy Elliot there's a certain arrogance with um, white Americans regarding rap that they have this ironic dance they do to rap music that yeah. annoys me I just do my head that's fine but we'll talk about you do the chicken dance with my head you see it in every I watch a lot of shows f- like Euphoria or Atlanta or um, Insecure where there's a lot of people portrayed as ignorant hipster white people yeah. that just almost take the piss and enjoy rap ironically mm. And that is a huge deal over in America. Like that Portlandia Wu Tang thing. Just exactly, yeah, just yeah. all that. Like, I want to take a bit of the culture and enjoy it, but yeah. I don't want to actually be in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just learn enough about the carry carry conversation, but, I, but not be into it. I have to admit that, like, when I see that stuff happening, and I see Americans coming into the bar I'm in, and they're asking for, they always ask for 2005 stuff yeah. below. Never always. new rap. Never, never. ever, ever no. new rap. No. They, they want Nelly. And they want Nelly. Eve. Yeah. Let me blow your mind and yeah. stuff like that. But then when I see them dancing, it's an ironic. Insulting dance to rap. They do this like they have a big smile on their face. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. and they're growing. I'm like, that man, like, like are you, I know. Do you understand how good this fucking music is? Yeah, they don't. No. And, and you're annoying. It's, and a, you're, it's a nostalgic factor to them. It's not the concept of the music being good. But it comes, it's not. They're, they grew way closer to this music than I ever oh, will. They had access to it. They, these people play it in their cities. They could have went. But it, it reminded me. They, they, did, they did not come here. It reminded me of when I was doing metal clubs and people would walk in and do the fake Masha dance. <sighs> do you remember that? Yeah. And how annoying that was yeah. to see mm-hmm. someone taking the piss out of an entire genre That's of music yeah. and just taking and just being like, yeah, yeah bringing flip, the whole flip into it, yeah, just yeah. fuck off. So I see that and I think that is what people will see me as, mm. even if I say I love this amount of hip hop and that, yeah. and I'm nowhere near as much into hip hop as you are. I won't be able to talk my way with Esham or any of that out of a situation. I'd be like, oh, they all eyes on me. But listen, that, I just wanted to say that, that yeah. I do appreciate how annoying it must be to see privileged uh, fucking chads yeah. dancing to fucking hip hop like I said and, and drunk, is, drunky white girls yeah yeah, yeah this yeah, is why yeah. I do not go to hip hop gigs anymore the exactly. last yeah. no actually I lied earlier on I said the last hip hop gig I went to was Ice T the last hip hop gig I went to was Jizza doing Liquid, Liquid Swords, Swords yeah. and it was fucking horrific it was one of the worst experiences of my life. Because people m- are trying too hard. It's my favourite hip-hop album of all time. I fucking... I nearly died when I seen it announced. I, honest to God, I yeah, thought... Yeah, I remember I, that. I was like... <gasps> yeah. I thought I was having was, a fever dream. There was talk dream. of the thread of yeah. losing his mind. I, was ha- I thought I was absolutely having a fever dream. Like, I've got the coronavirus. It's fucking kicked in, boys. I'm off the Valhalla, right? That's what I thought. And I went to it, and I was surrounded by fucking mutants for the entire thing. And that poor bastard Jizz had done three nights. Three nights of that. And not only that, he came back last year and done another night of it in a different venue, and I still could not go. My plan was, I went to the opening night, he, was, he had two more after that, three in total in the Sugar Club. And my plan was, if this is good night one, I'm absolutely, I don't care how much it is, I am getting tickets, I'll buy them off scalpers, I'll pay 100 quid a pop, I will go to every single night to see Liquid Swords play three times in a row. Boy, fucking jizza. This is got, what's going to happen. And I went, and I didn't even stick around for the encore. I walked the fuck out. Yeah. Because all that happened to me, I was surrounded by fucking cunts on day release. All these fucking pro- lads, probably my age, but like got married when they were 22 and have a gaggle of children and were given release by their wives to go out. So they start drinking at six o'clock. And so they can't drink they for They can't shit. hack it. They're this is just falling. a biological thing. that you ca- If you get out of drinking, yeah. you can't just walk back into there it. There was nobody. I am standing there like a prick. Like fucking uh, standing there rhyming the whole album, and he's doing like fucking Wu Tang bangers and all. I'm losing my fucking mind, and he's doing it all. And I'm fucking giving it loud. The chicken head is going, and I'm rapping along. Fucking not out that, not out loud, so I don't have to say the bold words. <laughs> but I'm fucking, I'm doing yeah. them. Yeah, oh you, yeah, yeah. 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 When the yeah. MCs came to, li- yeah. I'm doing the whole fucking thing, and I look around, and there's just 
balded fucking 40 year old men falling over themselves puking in corners lifting up their fucking pint bottles of boomers and waving them in the air it's oh. red hot and yellow like you don't care woo the roof's on fire and I fucking <laughs> couldn't take it anymore no, I know I mean, and the minute he just... was like good night Dublin and I thought you know what he's going to come back and he's going to do fucking he's going to do he's, he's going to do like fucking something big 